begin our worship this morning with our opening prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life. Let us feast on you and find nourishment for our souls. You are the light of the world. Let us follow you out of the darkness. You are the door. Let us enter the Father's presence in your name. You are the good shepherd. Let us rest in your provision. You are the resurrection and the life. Let us find true life and victory in you. You are the way, the truth, and the life. Let us love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We pray this in your name. Amen. For opening hymn this morning, number 16, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Understand as we sing number 16. Good morning, everybody. Would you please pray with me? Dear Father, there are many among us today with special needs in their own lives and need your special touch and reassurance right now. There are numerous physical problems and we don't understand. We don't understand why these things come in our lives and we're tempted to question you and our faith is tested also, sometimes to the limit. We, pr we pray that their faith will not fail during these days. Some have family and relationship problems. They need special grace to see them through. Bring healing and reconciliation to them. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If our children join me in the back. Sings my soul. 
talking about discernment. It's a word that means discerning or deciding what is the will of God for your life. Because sometimes it's hard. It's hard to find out what is the will of God versus what's something that you just want to do. What is your desire versus what is God's desire? 
today we're going to read uh, from the book of Acts, a time in which Paul uh, firmly knew God's desire for his life and followed his will to a T. And from it, we're going to decide how we, uh, too, can follow God's will in our lives. But let us start with our scripture reading from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Uh, Paul had seen the vision, and we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Tros, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day we went on to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. Oh, and we stayed there for several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. Uh, we sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyarai uh, named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. The word of the Lord. This story, in a lot of ways, reminds me of the lesson we heard a few weeks ago of Paul on the road to Damascus. Because Paul had a vision, and then immediately he knew the will of God. He had a vision or a dream of a man from Macedonia calling him to come and to spread the word there. I'd have to say... If I had a dream and a man called me to some far-off land, when I awoke, I would imagine that I must have eaten something sour the night before. I don't think I would immediately know it was the will of God. I mean, I've had lots of dreams. Uh, some of the dreams are very weird, right? Uh, some of the ideas I've had have been fairly concrete. I, I've assumed that God was calling me in some direction only to find out that he wasn't. It was just me. I was the one thinking I was called somewhere. But I was wrong. And that happens quite a bit. I think we've all got something wrong in our lives. Uh, sometimes we've got things famously wrong in our lives. Whenever I think of something that's famously wrong, I think of an article that I saw. It, it was published in 1903 on December 8th in the New York Times. The title of the article was, Man Will Not Fly in a Flying Machine for a Million Years. Obviously, that was wrong, right? Uh, we've all taken planes. We've all been to locations, uh, been somewhere else on a plane. But you may not realize how wrong this article was. Uh, Bob Hardy, being the history person we have over here, our history buff in the congregation, might know this, but you may not. The Wright brothers made their famous first flight in 1903 on December 17th. Nine days after that article was published. <laughs> In fact, several copies of that New York Times article were shipped to London, another leading city. And by the time that those papers arrived in London, news had already reached them through telegram about the Wright brothers' flight. Uh, they were opening that paper for the first time, and it was already wrong. Sometimes we get things famously incorrect. And it happens in our lives, too, when we try to decide what God's will is for us. 
On Tuesday, uh, I worked as an election officer. I worked the polls helping people check in. And over the 12 hours that I was there, I kind of struck up a friendship with the person working alongside me. He was an architect from New York. He sold his practice and moved here. And he, as a retiree, felt like he should volunteer and do something. But as we were chit-chatting, he told me about his life's journey, about how he originally was a partner at a large firm, and he quit his job to form his own company. He left that high-paying career to try to start something on his own. And through it all, he had lots of ups and downs. But he said by far the hardest part of his entire life was figuring out when he was doing something, if it was his will or if it was God's will. Now, there's an interesting part in our scripture reading today. You may have missed it. It's the word we. We put out to see. Luke, the author of the book of Acts, is in this narrative. It's the first time that Luke is an active participant in his book. Uh, we've heard about Paul, we've heard about Peter, but now Luke is doing something. It, now, it says that as soon as Paul woke up, they immediately set out for Macedonia. But there had to be a conversation, right? Because Paul had this vision, Paul had this dream. Luke was just asleep. <laughs> Luke woke up to have his companion say, hey, I had a dream. We're changing all of our plans. We're making a detour. We're not going to where we said we were going to go. We're going somewhere else completely. And that's a long trip. I mean, did you see how many cities they had to go through before they got to Philippi? I mean, I know I mispronounced half their names anyways. Uh, he went to so many locations. This wasn't a, a minor change. Uh, this was a huge detour. It was vastly different than what they planned to do. How did Paul convince Luke to make this change? I think a lot of times in our lives we like to focus on ourselves as individuals. What is God's call for my life? What is God doing for me? Me in particular. But when we look for God's will, sometimes it's important to talk to the people around us, to talk to our friends, to talk to our family. Sometimes what we feel is God's will, they might say, well, maybe you should look at that again. Uh, people around us can help us discern what God's will is for our lives. When that friend of mine who was a poll worker was telling me about leaving that career, leaving the partnership he had at that firm, he talked about the importance his wife had in that decision. Because they had two children when he left that firm. One child in college and the other was going to be in college next year. They were paying for it too. Leaving that high paying career to start something new was a bit of an unknown. He didn't quite know if God was calling him to do it or if it was just something that he felt was nagging at him. So he talked to his wife and his wife sat down and said, no, this is God's call for your life. This is something that you have to do. His practice ended up being quite successful, and that call was confirmed in that reward. If we look at our scripture today, uh, we see that they made this very long journey to Philippi. And when they were there, they converted a woman named Lydia. Lydia ends up being an important figure in the book of Acts. Uh, she was the leader of the church in Philippi. Uh, she was a strong Christian and built this community of believers here in Macedonia. She was an important person and they were rewarded with her conversion by following God's will. But if you read the next chapter, if you read chapter 17, you'll find a different story. Because in chapter 17, 
Paul is ran out in the middle of the night from the city of Thessalonica. He didn't get the reward that he got in Philippi. He, he was ran out, and yes, that could have been the will of God for him to be ran out of the city, or Paul could have got it wrong. Even Paul can get the will of God wrong, because throughout our lives, we will get it wrong. We can do everything possible. We can talk to our friends, our family, our church, and still at some point, we will do something that isn't the will of God. It's going to happen. Occasionally, you will fail. Uh, it, things won't work out the way you hoped. But that's okay. Because in the end, the reward, the reward is so great that even the failures along the way, well, they'll just look like speed bumps on the road. So what we can take from this, what we can take from this scripture is that finding the will of God isn't always going to be easy. Uh, yes, Paul could get it w without a second thought, but sometimes in our lives, well, it might take a little bit more time. And, and what you should do is talk to the people around you, talk to the believers you trust, and, and ask them if this is truly the will of God for your lives. But even if you are going to make some mistakes, even if occasionally you're going to look like the author of that article and people are going to look at you nine days later saying you were famously wrong, it's still worth it to try. Because when you get the will of God right, when you follow God's will, the reward is so great that everything else just fades in the distance. Now, will you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you. We thank you for giving us your will, even if we don't always see it. Uh, we thank you for being there with us as we pray to try to find out what your will is for our lives, even if we pray and pray and pray and it doesn't become any clearer. We know in the end you are always with us. You are always faithful. And if we do follow your will, no matter what the bumps might be along the road, the path will lead to something great. Uh, we pray all of this in your son's holy and great name. Amen. Let's stand as we sing this morning, I exalt thee. You'll find the words on the screen. Let's stand as we sing, I exalt thee. Before church today, um, our Sunday school class called me in there to have a bit of a discussion, uh, particularly about the color purple. 
What is the significance of purple? What's the reasoning we have purple? Why was Lydia a dealer in purple cloth? And we had a nice discussion, but, and in it, one of the members, Joyce, said, well, how do we have so much knowledge about these little things, right? Uh, we were talking about the different books and volumes of books that talk about the Scripture and every little detail in it, and how it's impossible for us to have all of the knowledge and all of the understanding of the Scripture in whole. But there's a good thing. We don't need to know it all. We don't. Uh, belief, in part, is about knowing that we won't understand everything. We won't always understand the will of God in our lives, and we won't always understand every small detail of Scripture. It's part of the process of learning along the way. And when we come to this table, we keep that in mind. Because it's open to all, no matter where you are on your journey with Christ. Whether you feel you have a good understanding of the word purple in connection to Scripture, or if it doesn't make any difference to you, purple or orange or, or any other color. No matter what, you're invited to this table today as we partake in this holy communion meal. For on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread, and having blessed it, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, after supper, he took the cup, and having blessed it, he poured it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, given to you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you for this spiritual bread and thank you for this cup of the new covenant because of all of what Jesus did for us. We remember the first time we received him as our Lord and Savior. We remember when we accepted him to be our guide for each day for the rest of our lives. We ask your presence today as we partake in this Holy Communion, assured that we will not be forsaken if we seek to do your will. We ask this in his holy name. Amen. Amen. And Jesus said, <laughs> When I went into the Sunday school and I was discussing purple, I in particular discussed the importance of purple because it signified that Lydia was wealthy. If she was a dealer in purple cloth, she was a woman of means. Uh, she had capital. Uh, she wasn't scraping by. She had enough capital to, to make a difference. And we know in the Bible she used her money for good. She used it to build up the Christian community in Philippi. Uh, she used it to spread the gospel message, uh, to be God's hands here in this world. We may not all be dealers in purple cloth. In fact, I would hope you're not today. It's probably not as lucrative as it once was. Uh, but we all have something we can give to build up our community here. And as we have our moment of reflection, let us think about what we can give uh, to build up this community. We may not all be those dealers of purple cloths, but we have something we can give to God.
If you've been worshiping with us for a while and you feel uh, the connections and the love of God in this community, then I invite you to come forward and either make the confession for the first time or reaffirm your faith today that you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, as we sing our hymn of response. Let's sing as we sing hymn 517, Love Divine, All Love is Excelling, hymn 517. Come on. 
Miss Joyce. She's been worshiping with us for quite a while. She was actually the one who called me into the Bible uh, study this morning. She was the one who got me for the question about purple. And she's wearing purple nonetheless. And I almost took it off. I did take it off. Did I put it back on? <laughs> He's been talking to me since I woke up this morning. I can't tell you. And we are so happy to have you in our congregation. Joyce, do you accept the right hand of Christian fellowship? And do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? And do you accept him as your Lord and Savior? A million times over. Amen. A million times over. And congregation, will you reaffirm your faith with me today that you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and do you accept him as your Lord and Savior? Amen. Amen. Now, Susie, will you stand in the back with Joyce to make sure she gets introduced to everyone? All right. And I ask that you come by, say hi to Joyce, uh, let her know how welcome she is here in this congregation. But now, uh, now let us close in prayer. Now may the Spirit of God surround you. May the peace of God be in your heart. And may you share that peace with each and every person you meet. Amen. Amen.